everybody, it's Dandruff with your news cartridge for Wednesday, September 20th, 2017. I've got an impromptu update about the story that I've been covering for the last two days about death penalty beginnings. Valve has reinstated all keys that were revoked by the developer, saying that they do have a number of reasons why keys can be revoked, but this didn't match any of the criteria. If you owned the game previously, you should find it in your Steam library now. Okay, so the middle of the week begins with Dynasty Warriors 9, and a little bit more information about the release window. It will be here sometime early 2018. There are a bunch of new screenshots, too if you want to go check those out. However, we do have the specific release date for the Final Fantasy 15 multiplayer, releasing on Halloween, October 31st, and there's a trailer for it if you want to check that out. Coming to Nintendo Switch is the picture puzzle game Pit Cross, and it will contain over 300 puzzles for 8 US dollars, or your regional equivalent. Moving on to some update news, with PUBG receiving an update last night, making it no longer possible to bind more than one action to the same key. This is an effort to prevent crouch jumping, which is technically not allowed because it lets players jump through windows. In other PUBG news, the creator Brendan Green has made some comments that he would like to see a single player campaign added to PUBG, but currently there are no plans, they're not working on it, it's just a neat idea. What do you think of a single player PUBG campaign? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you still haven't picked up PUBG because the $30 price tag is a little much, then Newegg.com is offering a 10% off discount with the code seen on your screen right now. In somewhat related news, Epic Games announced not too long ago that Fortnite would have a 100 player Battle Royale style mode and have now revealed that that mode will be available as a standalone free-to-play download. This is obviously an attempt to dethrone PUBG, and do you think Fortnite has what it takes? Let me know in the comment section down below. In update news, Overwatch's latest patch revealed that if you're marked as a toxic player with the avoid me reputation, you will have your ability to use the voice comms restricted. This is causing some controversy because some players are reported completely unwarranted and it's lowering their rating. Obviously this needs some work, and Blizzard currently hasn't made any statements in regards to the system. No Man's Sky is in the news today after receiving update 1.37 which now sets a new default control for PC. Gamers can now use their mouse to direct their ship which way they want to go, leading to a more immersive experience for some. However, if you don't like it, you can just turn it off. Our final update news is for Pokemon Go, which is on version 0.75.0 for Android and 1.45.0 for iOS. Mostly it's a bunch of bug fixes, but if you want to find the full patch notes, there's a link to them in the description down below, along with timestamps and links for sources for all of today's stories. In other Pokemon Go news, the Equinox event is coming in two days on September 22nd and ends on the 2nd of October. During this time, Pokemon eggs will hatch 50% faster, and trainers can also get a 2km egg with the chance of a rare Pokemon like Chansey, Mareep, or Larvitar. Moving on from there, it only took Nintendo about a week to shut down the mod that I had mentioned last week called SM64, which allowed online multiplayer for the classic Super Mario 64. Nintendo hit the creator hard too, not only by DMCAing YouTube videos, but by shutting down their Patreon as well. Despite Despite all of this, the creator of the mod says that he has not received a cease and desist letter from Nintendo. If you're looking to get the most powerful console ever created, the Xbox One X, then good news because pre-orders have begun today, and just to note, this is not the first edition known as the Project Scorpio edition, this is just the standard model. Humble Bundle, my favorite place to buy games, has a great deal right now which they are calling the Very Positive Bundle, because every game has a very positive rating on Steam. This includes great games like Dungeon Souls, Shadow of Mordor, Game of the Year edition, Death Road to Canada, and Beat Cop. The highest tier includes all games and a t-shirt and pre-order for Middle Earth Shadow of War. And then before we move on to the main topic today, I have yet another follow-up to a story on Monday, but this one's about the golf game discovered in every single Nintendo Switch. And I must admit that I am a little bit taken back by this, and Nintendo has done a beautiful thing. This is a tribute to Mr. Satoru Iwata himself, and the way to access this game is to hold the Joy-Cons detached from the Switch and do Iwata's direct motion, like this. On July 11th, the day he passed away. The reasoning for golf is because Mr. Iwata programmed the game himself. Nintendo, I think this was very appropriate and a wonderful tribute to a man who loved gaming and just would hope others would understand. And then before I begin crying again, that brings us to our final topic today, which is some recent changes to reviews on Steam. One minor change is the developer and publisher are now displayed directly beneath the release date. The biggest change comes in the form of a histogram, which indicates when both positive and negative reviews were written. Valve's justification for wanting to include this information was due to the recent behavior of gamers review bombing games. Review bombing is when a bunch of gamers go leave negative reviews on a game in response to something that's happened either with the developer publisher or 
or with the game itself. Great examples of this are GTA 5 when Take 2 disabled modding capabilities and when We Happy Few picked up Gearbox as their publisher. Valve made a rather lengthy post last night about the chains and addressed the idea of review bombing and exactly what should be done about it. Many things were considered, like the possibility of locking reviews depending on a number of factors, but this would restrict individuals' ability to voice their opinion, and working out the timing of this would be a logistical nightmare. Other things were considered, like changing altogether how review scores were calculated, but this carries its caveats and would produce inherently unreliable data. Ultimately, what Valve ended up doing was no more than the chart itself, taking the attitude to just leave it the way it is, because the benefits of review bombing outweigh the negative, and I would completely agree. Where else are customers to voice their opinion and feel like it actually matters? Not the Steam forums, which are heavily moderated and not everyone sees, that's for sure. I think this was the right move on Valve's part. I hope they understand that customer satisfaction means more than any review score, and it's their customers' money that keeps the servers going and developers wanting their games on Steam. In the end, nothing will change, because in my opinion, nothing needed to change in the first place. I think review bombing is not only helpful, but necessary. It gives developers and publishers the kick in the ass they need to satisfy their customers. Great examples are GTA 5 now has modding capabilities and Gearbox never made their deal with G2A. Both were only achieved because people made a big enough stink about it. Knowing when these reviews happened will benefit both the customer and the developer because they can be cross-referenced with a date to find out what happened and make a change if necessary if you're a developer and to find out if the game is still worth your money if you're a consumer. What do you think of the new Steam chart for review scores. Let me know in the comment section down below, please. How would you score these? It's tomorrow's game releases. For PC, Containment Core, Arrowheads, The Journey Down, Chapter 3, Purgation, Shroom, Auto Age, Standoff, Mystery Loss, Darkest Vil Castle, Battle of Frigates, Heat Signature, Hold Fast, Nations at War, Ancient Frontier, Ambush Tactics, Consortium, The Tower, Project Cars 2, Zing, The Land Beyond, Steampunk Syndicate 2, Age of Gladiators 2, and Zombie Solitaire 2, Chapter 2. For Nintendo Switch, Steam World Dig 2, and Thimbleweed Park. For Nintendo 3DS, Guide the Ghost. Thank you very much, everybody. This has been News Cartridge. I am Dandruff. I will see you tomorrow. And I know a botanist who does research on nuts. He works in macadamia. Okay, so Dandruff is getting himself into some drama lately, and uh, this is gonna, this happened today. So, uh, do you all remember my good buddy Sam Abbott from uh, the podcast I did with Sid Alpha, oh, roughly a month ago? Yeah. Had a little conversation with him on Twitter today. Um, yeah, apparently, apparently it, it's, um, Mr. Abbott, M Mr. Abbott, if you will, believes that review bombing is an emotional response. So if if you don't like that modding was taken away from you from GTA 5, emotional response. If you don't like that Gearbox partnered up with We Happy Few, the game he's working on, um, because of Gearbox, who's done some shady things in the past, like, I don't know, Aliens, Colonial Marines, um, you know... Mm, that's an emotional response. You can't you can't not like a developer for the things that they've done in the past. That's irrational. That's that's just how dare you? How <laughs> you're being hostile, Dandruff. You were being hostile. So hostile that cause you didn't swear or insult them at all and they 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 called you hostile and, and all this other stuff and and I just tried to voice my opinion and just kind of point it out but they they, they, he also said that, um, sticky, that there weren't, that, I said that there were negative things on the front page of the forum, he said that there were po positive things on the front page, but like, yeah, but there's negative things too, and he's like, no, there's, there's positive things, and I'm like, but, wait, I had to go to the second page to find something negative, but, he's like, no, I, 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 I don't know, that whole damn thing just had me, that whole thing today was just, beyond confusing i i couldn't figure it out what he was going on anyway i'm supposed to talk to one of the other developers of this game tomorrow over over discord not supposed to be anything formal just supposed to be a little friendly chit chat maybe get to know somebody i actually don't know this person at all uh she is a developer for consortium games uh or not consortium uh compulsion games sorry my bad compulsion games not consortium games compulsion um and uh i would I'm interested to see her take on it. 
Um, she had called me uh, hostile. She had, uh, I asked, how was I being hostile? Please take all the time you need to explain to me. Because I, I, I don't think I was being hostile at all. Uh, ha I was harassing Sam by replying to things he said publicly on Twitter. I was harassing him somehow. I didn't get blocked by him. Gr granted, he could have blocked me. That would have been the wussy way out. Um, he didn't, though. He didn't. So good for him. Good for Sam. Thank you for not blocking me. I, I mean that sincerely. Thank you for not blocking me. There have been other people who blocked me because I disagreed with them. That's that's just fucking immature. Thank you for not being that immature. Really. Um, but it's still disheartening that it just seems like only positive feedback will be taken into consideration. I had pointed out to... I had pointed him to one thread who the guy was complaining about some things and one of the arguments, the only argument that he had addressed was whether or not uh, We Happy Few should have been in early access. And I will disagree. I will say that we, with the, with the person who I pointed out, I will say that, yes, it needed early access. But another thing that was pointed out was adding more DLC to this game, adding a season pass to this game, is going to upset the story. And... You either you either don't add more story, which upsets people, or you add more story, which is going to upset people. Why didn't they just leave it? Why didn't they just leave it? Why why? None of this makes not not a lot of it makes any sense. Um, hopefully we'll get to the bottom of it tomorrow. Like I said, just the uh, I, I believe they're only going to give me thirty minutes of her time. I think that is that'll be plenty. I I. I I'm looking forward to it, and I think it'll be really constructive, and hopefully, hopefully, a developer will get some understanding from the customers end and see where we're coming from, because I don't, I don't understand this. There's, there's just things that don't make sense. Well, I'll, I'll address it tomorrow, and, and we'll, we'll maybe, I don't know, I'll, I'll go over it tomorrow. Social media links are over here, everybody. Thank you so much. Be sure to hit that like button if you liked it. Hey, I'll go hit that dislike button if you didn't like it. Uh, hit the uh, click over here to subscribe. Click that Patreon link if you really, really like me. And click over here to watch yesterday's episode where we do a follow-up to Death Penalty Beginnings where the developer said some justifications for the reasons why he did what he did, but it only led to more questions. <sighs> go check out those last two episodes. Uh, bye, everybody. See you tomorrow.